IndyCar has announced that it has chosen its cockpit head protection device for 2020 when it's finally going to surround the cockpit and add extra protection to the drivers. And you may have seen it before on a Red Bull in 2016. That's a Red Bull Formula One car. This is the design created by Red Bull Technologies. And to talk me through how this happened and why this design is in IndyCar and not in F1, I've got Ed Straw and Tom Errington here to discuss it. So Tom, give us the backstory here. A uh, really interesting announcement from IndyCar that it's partnering with Red Bull. Obviously the technology's arm technically, not the F1 team. But how did this come about? Yeah, I mean, the process really, if you look at it from beginning to end, is going to be around five years. This, this started after Justin Wilson's death very quietly. And actually it was the media reports that came out after that that intrigued um, PPG, which is an aerospace company, makes canopies for fighter jets. They approached IndyCar and said, look, we have some ideas you might be able to help. So... Behind the scenes, IndyCar began working on this project. They had Gabby Chavez in the simulator regularly correlating what they found. The aero kit that came out last year was designed with the addition of a safety device getting added in the future. Same with things like the cooling they've talked about. The car can be easily adapted for that. So then it wasn't really until beginning of 2018 that it broke cover, if you like, and it started to have its public tests and everything else. And it was really promising at first. The issues that Scott Dixon raised in his first run was cooling, distortion, they were things that they knew were going to be an issue and the plan was always to go away, fix it and come back, but they went away, we didn't hear anything for a long time and then all of a sudden we now have this Red Bull concept. And how did Red Bull and IndyCar basically come together on this? Yeah, IndyCar, when it was doing the beginning of this research, was helped a bit by the fact that it's not governed by the FIA, so it was very much able as a series to set its course on what it was going to do. But it always stayed in touch with the FIA because it was interested in what was going on with the Halo, even though it couldn't use it and those devices there. So all the connections were there right from the beginning. And equally, the FIA and F1 knew what IndyCar was doing. So that collaboration was already existing, continues to exist. So within that work, and they would have known that this was an option that F1 pursued and didn't work and would have had that data to begin with. And obviously, IndyCar decided that it liked the basis there and went further down the line with Red Bull. So, Ed, we mentioned that Red Bull basically pitched this effectively against the halo when F1 was trying to work out what it wanted to do with cockpit protection. This is when Red Bull ran the car in an F1 practice session at Sochi. That's Daniel Ricciardo at the wheel in 2016. But why did this lose out to the halo? Well, obviously, this is very much a, a prototype of the version that's gone into, into IndyCar. It, wasn't, it just wasn't strong enough, fundamentally. They hadn't done enough work on it in order to get it to the point where it, where it was ready. Uh, there was a study into the... the Belgian Grand Prix start crash when uh, Fernando Alonso went over the top of Charles Leclerc Sauber and it was reckoned that the that the, that the aero screen design at this point they were comparing it to the, the PPG IndyCar design reckons that that would have been about 10% as effective as the halo was in terms of stopping what would have been contact between Fernando Alonso's end plate and Charles Leclerc's visor so when you get these kind of freestanding aero screens they're just not as effective and actually if you compare this this actually is quite a different design obviously the screen there is familiar but if you look at the, the the design for IndyCar it's really a hybrid of the two because you've got the you've got the screen section the uh, laminated polycarbonate screen but there is also effectively a halo there it's titanium same as the halo and so you've kind of got the the protection for smaller objects penetrating and you've got the the sort of the halo type structure in it which gives it that robustness and, and that strength. That's the key thing, isn't it, Tom? The, the strength issue did come up when Red Bull and IndyCar revealed this last week. And they did say that what they've got now is a long, a long way more advanced from where we were a couple of years ago. Yeah, I mean, one of the questions that was asked was very much compared to the Halo. And the answer they got back is in terms of the load it can take, it's virtually identical. And obviously the difference here is we've kind of seen the beginnings of the device with the AFP that's been on the front of the car Indy this month. And that's a solid titanium piece designed to deflect away tyres or bits of bodywork that you'd have seen with the previous generation of cars. So you're already adding to a very, very strong device there and it looks as though it's mounted a lot higher. So what looks a little bit like a halo doesn't have the problems that it would have had if they'd just put a halo on an Indy car, which is when you're turning on banking and looking left, your eye line would be right where you can actually see the halo and you wouldn't be able to judge corner approach, corner exit. So it seems to be taking what they learn in F1 applying it to the windscreen and very much coming up with this hybrid, as Ed says, that should suit all parties.
You've both mentioned the Halo quite a lot there. Here it is, that's the current 2019 spec Halo that F1 is using, and we're seeing this across a lot of FIA series now as well. But now we've got a screen alternative that's basically a credible alternative to the Halo. Which one do you guys prefer, Halo or screen? Well, prefer is a, a, slightly, uh, a slightly loaded term, but in terms of the effectiveness for safety, the the IndyCar concept, provided it is as strong, I'm sure it is as strong as they say it is, is the, is the better solution. Obviously, the Halo's got certain strengths. It, for large objects, that kind of thing, it's brilliant. It protects the driver really well. But if you happen to come along, I don't know, Rubens Barrichello's discarded lateral damper spring, as Felipe Massa had the misfortune, there's a lot of, there's a lot of trajectories that can get a small object through and that it, it doesn't protect against all small objects that can do a lot of damage. So I, I would actually say that there's a very good chance we'll see Formula One go further down this line. Now, the Halo was chosen because it was the one that was ready at that time. They always said it was an ongoing project. And there is a, there's a next generation Halo, as it's been referred to, in the 2021 regs, which is going to be a more advanced version. And one of the things they want to do is make it better integrated into the chassis, because these have basically been sort of bodged into an existing design approach and so the 2021 regs wants to have this and I think it would be logical for them to look at a screen that they, they want to go down that direction where they protect the driver as much as possible and this as we kind of said the hybrid of the halo and the aero screen should give you the best of both worlds but I think it's very easy to say you don't like the halo or any of these devices but you know I'd have loved there to have been an aero screen on Justin Wilson's car at Pocono a few years ago. I think everyone would have done. So when the reality bites, that's when you want these things. So I think anything they can do to make it safer is, is good. And, and the thing I always disliked about the Halo was that small object problem. We had this at the Russian Grand Prix, I think, last year, where Pierre Gasly said there was an incident on the first lap and little bits of debris everywhere. And he actually said that a piece ended up in his lap, basically. Now, obviously, it didn't do any harm, but that proves your point, Ed, that things still can get through and around this. So, Tom, does that make a screen a much better option longer term? I think so. I think you have to recognise the important impact of the Halo in being that first step. And chances are, if we didn't have that there, we wouldn't have the content that IndyCar is looking at now. You certainly wouldn't have had that data for IndyCar to lean on, for example. But looking at it from a, a purist point of view, if you like, when you look at the Indy 500s in the 80s, you had cars that had effectively windscreens and it was seen as part of the car, part of the design. So I think... IndyCar's been quite important on having a car that still looks like a traditional IndyCar and it's managed to achieve that. If it's as, as safe as they say and it's gone through all the rigorous tests and it is as safe as they say, great, you've got the perfect world there. There is still issues with cooling and stuff and that, but as far as I'm aware, Delaro is working quite hard and knows of ways to help alleviate that problem. So it sounds like it's going to go in a really positive direction. And like Ed says, if it works in IndyCar, great, because that hopefully will trickle into F1 series below or whatever and we'll keep having that evolution in safety.